it's indeed a pleasure to work with everyone else in this, what I call the most exciting and forward-thinking project. Before I get into my brief presentation, I'm trying to give the context for, for the day, I'd like to just make a, a couple of comments. That there's some broad principles I think we're going to talk about today and we'll see throughout our presentations today. And that is the necessity of partnership and collaboration. And again and again, we'll see how this has come through in the, the Balco Creek project. The importance of leadership. When I talk about leadership, I mean leadership from the top down and from the bottom up. A long-term vision. Clearly, this is evident in what we see today with the 100-year vision for Balco. And importantly, Complement the goals of the BC Living Water Smart strategy, which I think you've all seen. It's important to work with senior governments with the goals and the visions as well. To seek balance between ecology, society, and the economy. And again, I think we'll see this as coming. And most importantly, most importantly, the importance of community. To me, this is what distinguishes Bowker from some other projects that has been truly driven with a passion and a vision from the community. Uh, I see this as a three-part presentation in the sense that Bowker Creek is obviously the central piece today. That's what it's all about. But importantly, I want to give that in the context of CAD, what we're trying to do throughout Vancouver Island and on the lower mainland. And finally, to share information across these boundaries. And we'll see evidence of that again later today. We've got this machine right, we'll get going. I've used this slide before, I use it again without shame. It's about leadership. The person I'm talking about here is John Muir. For those of you who are not familiar with John Muir, he was a crusty old Scot that came across in 1860 to Wisconsin with his father and was a pioneer farmer. But more than that, he recognized so early on the importance of protecting the landscape, the parks, for America in the future. The concept at that time of what was happening in California, the land grab was on, the gold rush was on, there was no thought to the future. I'm purposefully doing this because I'm going to introduce it to Bowker because I think there are similar principles here. I like John Muir's quote, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. If that isn't a good definition of integrated watershed management, what is? It captures the essence of what we do here has an effect on what we do over there. So it's moving us to this holistic approach to watershed management. As I mentioned earlier, a top-down, a top-down, bottom-up strategy. The story here is that Terry, Terry, Teddy Roosevelt had heard of John Muir, and Muir eventually got hold of him and took him up to the Yosemite National Park. Spent three days with him. At that time, convinced him of the need to get a parks strategy in for North America, or for America. Roosevelt was impressed, went back to Congress, and the rest is history. So again, this is a case of the decision maker working with the visionary. And that brings me again in to Bowker and the initiative here. The Bowker blueprint, at least in my opinion, is about reclaiming quote unquote lost territory. From damage caused as a result of our collective indifference, and you might say carelessness or indifference or greed or whatever, because we did not consider the values of, of, of urban streams important. When I was a young, I don't want to go that far back engineer in Scotland. None of this was talked about. Strong water was stuck in a big pipe and it was whiffed off to the nearest creek. No talk about the uh, low impact development or various areas. This has all come through but the passage of time. Now I want to sidebar a little bit just to mention a program I was involved with in the 1990s. You may remember it, some of you the Urban Salmon Habitat Program. And the good fortune to be manager of that program for its brief existence, and I say brief because it was unfortunate that politics takes over and the next generation comes and, and it died, I think, a, a rather early death. 
But um, <coughs> it, it, it passed around before it should have been, in other words. <coughs> but the point I want to make here is the principles in, in the Urban Salmon Habitat Program, again, are very germane to what's happening in Bowker. Bowker, in the 1920s, has a prolific, at least had a good run of coal. Above Haltane Creek, Haltane Road, there was trout, etc. In other words, a healthy, healthy system. The sudden increasing urbanization ended up with about 60% of, of, of the system now enclosed in culvert or underground. About 50% of the land of the watershed is hardscape. Now, we didn't do this intentionally. We did it because we didn't understand what we were doing. And I feel that what we're talking about here, through Cavi and on the Lower Mainland, it's all about the sea. Trying to reverse that trend and bring us into the balance of ecology and development. I want to mention this in passing, and I know Calvin Sandholm is here, that there's a, an initiative, Reinventing Rainwater Management, again, looking at the whole aspect of how we handle stormwater management. That, of course, is a major factor in the question of the damage to places like Barker Creek. <coughs> so what I like about the, the initiative here is the, the temerity, and I use that word, the audacity, if you wish, but the guts to propose a 100-year vision. And the reason we have to have a 100-year vision is simple, because creep and, and urban development, it takes time to change things around, and if we don't implant that 100-year long-term vision, will end up with the usual death by a thousand cuts. The second thing, you are willing to act upon this vision, which has already been identified. And you've drawn three municipalities together to rehabilitate Barco Creek. To ask municipalities to step outside their jurisdiction, see themselves contained in the larger watershed, is a real step in the right direction. So Barco Creek is all about what I call a new form of governance. It's quiet, silent, but very effective. First vision comes, then the community involvement, then support from the municipal decision makers, and then finally apply design with nature as a consistent future approach to develop. So it's turning the whole game plan around to another way of doing business. Now, let me link this into cabinet. For those of you who are not familiar with CAVI, the Convening for Action Vancouver Island was initiated at the Water and the City Conference in uh, 2006. However, it went, it started sometime before that, around about 2003, 2003, I think, we called it the Meeting of the Minds, gathering people together to start asking the big questions. What do we want Vancouver Island to look like in 50 years' time? And so from there, we had um, we effectively, I think, somewhat, uh, worked with four, four uh, regional districts, the CRD, the Couch and Valley, the Nanaimo, and the Colmont. Now they, as noted in that corner, represent about 90% of the population of Vancouver Island. We've also stretched sideways to revolve the uh, Greater Vancouver District, or called the Georgia Basin. I'm not going to go through this, but it gives you a sense since 2006, the partnerships have developed, developed and some of the deliverables that CAVI has achieved in that target. So this new business, as usual, is visualizing what we want Vancouver Island to look like in 50 years. And CAVI promotes water-centric planning and a design with nature way of thinking to create livable communities in balance with ecology. So what does this mean? Well, it's designing with nature, and clearly with the climate change adaptation coming online, we have to start thinking in compact ways of how we do development. I think the last three bullets are particularly germane to about protect and restore urban green space, strive for a lighter hydraulic footprint, achieve higher levels of stream, wetland, and marine protection. This kind of says it all. Tim Pringle from the Real Estate Foundation takes credit for this slide. But as you can see, the balance has been on the settlement side. We have not truly balanced ecology and development. And note, ecology can exist without human habitation. But human habitation 
certainly cannot exist without technology. There's a book written by Alan Wiesman, A World Without Us, which is an interesting book for those of you who haven't read it. It <coughs> apparently went on very well without us, thank you very much. And it's up to us to shape up and step up to the bar and do our bit. So what does that mean to Bhagavad Well, with that vision of the balance of ecology and economy, communities will protect their collective well-being, choose to treat settlement change and ecology resources with equal understanding, and they will find balance. I close with this comment. I referred to my wife this one who was a teacher in our days gone by. Because the two words here are, are really important vision and task. Vision means that you just exactly what Bauer was doing. You stretch to the future. You idealistic perhaps, but you, you set that goal. But you get your feet in the ground and you do the work. So it's not a sort of a touchy feely thing at all. It, it's having a goal and having a plan to achieve that goal. A vision without a task is but a dream. A task without a vision is but drudgery. Vision with a task is the hope of the world. And capture the party of the church inscription in Sussex. You know. May I take poetic license and say the last time that your vision with a task is the recovery of the Bunker Peak watershed. And so, in closing, because I know you're all here for the very same purpose, you're all in this game for changing the way we do business and sustainability. And as a quotation, which I, it's well used, but I find it much appreciated in most parts by Margaret Mead, the world-renowned anthropologist, when she said, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So good luck for that. Thank you.